Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thorne. Today is time for an important channel update. And you know, I've said I wanted to turn the MBTI into a spectrum and I wanted to make the MBTI more scientifically viable and I wanted to give improved accuracy and I wanted to make the MBTI more practically applicable. Well, I can say I've managed to do just that. A couple of years ago, I realized that the MBTI couldn't really perfectly describe me as a person. And of course, no system should be able to. No system can be perfect because we're dealing with people. And yeah, ultimately, we need to have flexibility when we use models so that we don't cherry pick or stereotype people into specific boxes, right? We need to make sure that the boxes are relatively open and relatively fluid. So how do we do that? One, we simplify the models. We don't expect to find one personality type that will explain 100% of your decisions and actions 100% of the time. No theory could perfectly explain every single thought that you have, every single action that you take, and every little thing that you do. And so what I've realized that I find to be really revolutionary is the idea that people have a core set of personality traits which tend to be relatively stable and that are relatively unlikely to change and a set of more flexible personality traits which are more open to change and compromise depending on the situation, who you're with or where you are. And so what I'm saying is, on certain dichotomies and on certain cognitive functions, you will show more cognitive flexibility. You'll be more open to change strategies, to try out different styles, to act differently depending on what the situation demands. But you'll find that most people have a set of things they tend to be relatively fixed about, things that seem to make out the core of an individual certain goals and certain actions and certain thought patterns that return and remain consistent parts of a person's personality. And so if we look within the framework of the MBTI, what we'll find is most likely you'll have one or two dichotomies that you tend to be relatively stable and consistent on. That means that no matter when you take the personality test or in what situation you take it or consider it from, you'll get more or less the same result. Most of the time, this will correlate with one of a specific set of Jungian cognitive functions. Here we have introverted intuition or extroverted intuition or extroverted thinking or introverted feeling, for example. But when you look at it more specifically, what you'll probably find is that not everyone is either an introvert or an extrovert. Scientifically, we know today that there are quite a large amount of people that fit within the ambivert spectrum. They are flextroverts. They can be sometimes introverted and sometimes extroverted, depending on the situation or what specifically we are talking about. And similarly, we'll find that not everyone is 100% of the time an intuitive or 100% of the time a sensing type. Certainly, we have people that are and can be strong in feeling, but weak in thinking and relatively balanced in terms of intuition and sensing, in the sense that you can switch strategies on certain dichotomies and maintain a set amount of goals and values that you find to be really important. But that's not really the revolutionary thing which I discovered and what I found while I was rereading some of Isabella Briggs' journals on the scientific validity of the MBTI, which was published in the 90s. To me, a dichotomy like feeling is not like an on and off switch. It's not like you're either feeling type or a thinking type and there is no spectrum or gradual nuances in between. No, of course, it's a gradual scale, which means that you'll have people that are really strong in feeling and people that are really strong in thinking and people that are relatively strong in feeling and relatively strong in thinking, right? And, you know, I think that's exactly what Isabella Briggs was going for when she created the judging and perceiving dichotomy. She attempted to further nuance Carl Jung's theories on introversion and extroversion by highlighting that, well, not everyone is a true or pure introvert or an extrovert. There are certainly people that have, for example, an extroverted judging function or an extroverted rational. And these kinds of extroverts should be distinguished from those that have an extroverted perceiving function, right? And in this video, I argue that we could go one step further than that and imagine a four-point scale with introversion, judging, perceiving, and extroversion on one chart. Imagine them as a spectrum and imagine yourself being and possibly fitting in one of these four corners, but not more than one of them, right? 
Essentially, imagine this. You could be a pure introvert in Jung's definition of the term, a person that has a primarily cognitive and cerebral strategy, a reflecting type that observes and thinks before they act, a person that, on top of that, has a more introverted, inwards-oriented style, considering their own inner world and perspective before the outer perspective. Or imagine that you're a pure extroverted type, playful, stimulation-seeking, outgoing, initiative-taking, proactive, a person that acts before other people have a chance, a person that speaks out for themselves, a person that's assertive, takes space, a person that shows high levels of enthusiasm, energy, and innate playfulness, right? And consider that, well, some people don't really fit inside those two poles, specifically the judging and perceiving types. And what I've found is that the judging types, they tend to share a similarly cognitive and cerebral style, similar to that of introverts, but also they share a similarly a common extroverted tendency, namely the tendency towards being proactive, taking initiative, leading, organizing, structuring. And so you could say the judging types structure and organize the world based on internal criteria, based on previous precognition and reflection. And then compare that to the perceiving type, the opposite of the judging type. The perceiving type is the polar of the judging, but shares some introverted and extroverted qualities. Specifically, unlike the judging type, the perceiving type tends to be more play less serious, more open to play around, to throw things back and forth, to see what everyone else does and to adapt to their environment. The perceiving type is adaptable, spontaneous, easygoing, where the judging type is industrious, hardworking, serious. And so consider that the perceiving type, many ways, shares a lot of things in common with the extrovert. The extrovert, like the perceiving type, is a person that will probably bounce off what every, everyone else is doing, a person that will react and respond to what comes up in their environment, where the judging type tends to be more focused and tends to be more focused on themselves and their own goals and strategies. The perceiving type is open Open like the extrovert, but like the introvert, the perceiving type tends to be relatively, relatively modest, relatively humble, relatively easygoing, focusing on what everyone else is doing, adapting to their environment, not necessarily making a scene around themselves, not necessarily taking over, or taking charge of the group or trying to lead or dominate the conversation. The perceiving types tend to be more flexible. They'll talk if you talk to them, but they might not necessarily introduce themselves or say uh, or try to lead or dominate the conversation that you two are having. Right. And that, in essence, is the introvert extrovert spectrum. A great scale and you can be somewhere in between these four poles. You can be somewhere on the middle or you can be somewhere in between introvert and perceiving type. Or you could be somewhere in between introvert and judging type. Or perhaps you're somewhere in between judging and extrovert. Or perhaps you're somewhere between extrovert and perceiving type, right? You know, the MBTI has often faced a lot of criticism for lack of scientific credibility. And previously, they've been criticized for having a very weak test-retest ratio. But historically, they've made a lot of improvements. And a lot of people don't know this, but the MBTI has actually improved its test-retest ratio. More and more often, the results are fairly consistent with a person's previous results, right? But one criticism remains, and that is the low practical applicability of the MBTI. And so the MBTI traits and dichotomies to this point, to this day, continue to have a relatively low predictability ratio. And what I mean with this is, in typical terms, even if we know that you're an INFJ, we might not be able to predict what kind of career you'll go for or what kind of education you might end up with or what kind of choices you might end up with because the MBTI results tend to have a very low correlation with specific activities in modern society. And so we can't really use the MBTI results for any practical purposes. The applicability tends to be relatively low. There's tendencies, yes, and they do have some predictability ratio, but it could be better. And I think the best way to make the MBTI a bit better is to improve the accuracy and specificity of the instrument in itself. And I think the reason why the MBTI has a very low predictability ratio is because we continue to assume that if you 
are in the 50% pile group of introverts, you'll share a lot of tendencies in common with everyone else that fits in the introvert ratio, regardless of their score, right? And how could that be? If a person has a 51% score on introversion and another person has a 99% score on introversion, we'll see drastic differences in a person's life choices, in what education they go for, in what kind of partner they might be interested in, in what kind of job they might go for. Simply because being a 51% introvert, well, that basically means you're an ambivert. So we need more groups and we need more nuance and we need more of a spectrum approach to the MBTI. If we can move in that direction, I think we'll revolutionize the world of personality psychology and we'll also, plus side, reduce so many of the unnecessary and harmful stereotypes that exist in the MBTI sphere. At least that's what I think. What do you think? Feel free to let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching and see you all in the next video.